Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek but I am Penge and welcome back to Crossroads Inn, which of course means we are back at the Tankard and Teapot, and last time out we decided to expand our hostelry services a little bit, so we did have a couple of beds in this pokey little room just here, but that wasn't enough. We kept seeing lots of people coming up to the desk saying, hello, I want a room, and they kept walking out again because we didn't have enough beds, so we decided to expand and get more beds. This did require another lunch. Loan. And my goodness me, there has been a tale of loans because the game has run on quite considerably since the end of the last part. Quite considerably indeed. I think maybe at the end of the last part, we're at the end of day 15 possibly. I think now we're on something like day 36. I have had to run time on an awful lot in order to pay back all the different loans because things got very, very complicated indeed. And of course, there's been a few little changes as well. The eagle-eyed amongst you might be looking thinking, hang on a minute. Things look a little bit different. What's going on just here? So, um, yeah, there's been a few little changes around the place. Nothing too grand. I've just sort of moved things around a little bit. And we've got ourselves some barrels in here and all that kind of stuff. We'll come to that momentarily. But, um, yes, so the loans. So we did have the initial loan. Let's go over to here. So we had the initial loan that we took out with the uh, the loan of your Vale Bank up here. And that was the one that we had to pay back first. But then in order to build all that lovely stuff, in order to build the lovely new great big sort of bunk house room with all the beds in, uh, we went down here and took out another loan from the National Bank of Sambria. <laughs> so we had two loans, which is always a bad thing. I should have known better, but there we go. So we had this place here. Uh, we owed money to them and we owed money to them. So we had to pay back the loan of your veil first. So we did that. I managed to get that paid off and it was wonderful. And I thought, hey, do you know what? The story will move on and it'll be brilliant. But no, it didn't move on because we had an outstanding loan down here at the National Bank of Sambria. So uh, as you can see, we now don't have a loan down here because I paid that one off. But that got very, very close. That got down to, I think it was a day. We had a day left to repay some of the money. So then I had to go up to here, <laughs> to the Untermarchen Bank, and take out a loan over here, which is still outstanding. But we've been whittling it down. So we only owe 2,240 monies, and we've got ourselves 4,866. So we can pay this off. So I took out a loan from here to pay the loan off from down here. And some of the money from this loan was used to try and pay off this loan just here. <laughs> <laughs> so so the moral of the story is loans are bad don't don't take out loans people it just ends up in all sorts of terrible sort of nonsense or if you are going to take out a loan maybe just take out one don't take out two loans. I don't think I'm going to do that again. I think that was that was a truly terrible idea. So we won't be doing that again. But um, but yeah, while I've been sort of running the game on, and it took quite a long time to get to where we are. There were points where I just left it. I'd go downstairs. I'd make a cup of tea. I'd come back up. I kind of check the money. I check the stock just to make sure that we had enough food and whatnot. And um and yeah, it's gone on for quite some time. But we have made a few little changes here and there. So the first one really is that there's uh, there's stuff in here now the barrels of the beer and wine and whatever else we've got cider and stuff like that because we've got cider on the uh, on the bar tab now as well the bar sort of uh, menu thing and um, we've got the barrels are in here so we've put them near to the bar so they don't have to go through the door into the stock room over to the corner to grab the drink to come back out here they can just quickly go over here and these barrels have been specifically targeted so if we go and look at that just there go down here this is the wine barrel that's all that stores that just stores wine and that is it uh i can't remember what the other one what order they're in but that one up there is what's that one that one is the cider barrel Okay, so the top one is a cider barrel. So that means that this one here, no, that's a that's a that's a person. That's a ghost. <laughs> it's a person in a bed. <laughs> it's a person in a bed, but we're on the we're on the ground floor. So that's a little bit weird that we've clicked on the spooky ghost man. But okay, we'll click on no no go I don't want to click on the spooky ghost man. Hang on. Right, we need to get rid of spooky ghost man selection. Can we not do that? Can we click on that barrel? There we go. Um, so uh, this one stores the lager. And the lager has been very, very popular. The lager has been hugely popular. So we've moved those out of the storage room and put them here because it makes it easier for the uh, serving staff to go and grab stuff from here and take it over to here. And um, we've also rejigged this a little bit as well. We've rejigged the storage because we got rid of the barrels so we could put some more storage in. So the storage over here 
in the kitchen is just solely dedicated to food. We're not stirring anything else in here. We're not stirring wine or wax or candles or anything like that or plates or anything like that. So we're not stirring any of that in the kitchen. And then stuff over here is generally just sort of a store everything kind of thing. So I think this thing is, what's this one? This is storing yet yeah, anything but food. So this is storing the plates and the cloths and other stuff. Ash, I mean, why would you want to store that? I don't know. But yeah, all the stuff that isn't food, so mugs and what have you. Also, there's poison. I kind of feel like we should store poison somewhere else. <laughs> somewhere very secure. Not next to the plates. But there we go. So um, yeah, that's just sort of re been rejigged a little bit. And um, because we've got all these extra bits in, the door was moved. We've just moved the door. So the door is now here rather than there because there they could go through it, but it looked a little bit weird. They kind of kept walking through shelving, which I didn't really like. It's a bit like this one where they kind of go through the shelving. So um, so yeah, we changed that round. And I think that was kind of it. We've put the prices up a little bit. So we've upped the prices of things, but I think more or less, it's all kind of the same sort of thing. I'm a little bit worried that we've got Ghosty Man selected. Hang on, can we just unselect you? Yes, great. Okay, we've, we've looked at that. Please unselect ghosty man <laughs> okay fine whatever um so i think now we are ready to go and pay off our debts because um oh hang on no we, we've hired some more people that i should also point that out we've hired a few people as well one of them is very very good um is it you is it ann i think it, i think it's ann she's really good so she's a workaholic yay go ann uh she is speedy which is great uh she's loyal and about okay she's dull which yeah Three out of four ain't bad. She's pretty good. So yeah, she's a bit dull. That's fine. She gains experience a bit slower. But in terms of the actual skills here, she's very, very good. I'm very happy with Anne. So yeah, she's great. We did have a cook. I did hire a cook because uh, I thought maybe that would help speed things up a bit in the kitchen. And um, the cook didn't really do any cooking. I wasn't entirely sure <laughs> if I'd done the right thing. Uh, he spent most of his time wandering around over here, just kind of just sort of wasting time and my money. So we fired the cook because he didn't do anything. And uh, what we might do is we'll move the story on. Then we might rehire a cook and just see what happens. But yeah, the one that we did have uh, just, just did not contribute at all to any kind of kitchen stuff. So uh, right, here we go. Let's move the story on, shall we? Because we've been waiting a while for the actual story to progress because our goal is pay your bank debt. And after <laughs> goodness knows how many days, we can do that. So let's uh, let's poodle on over to the Untermarchian Bank. And I don't know how I do that. Do I write them a letter and it arrives instantly? I don't know. But we can pay back all. Hooray! <laughs> we've paid off our loans. So now when we move time on, that thing will ping into life, pay our bank debt. So um, the reward is, I think that's a reputation increase. Now reputation has gone up quite a bit because we've been serving many drinks and uh, I don't know, making lots of food and people have been saying it's great. So um, so yes, we've got ourselves, we've got ourselves 19. Lovely reputation now. So we'll claim that. So that goes up to 20. Thank you very much. And um, and then, yeah, we'll just wait for the story to carry on now. I imagine at some point, I was going to say, Uncle Martin will come back in. He's back in his fancy chef's whites. Okay, right. So here we go. We've been waiting a long time for the story to continue. Before I forget, there's a letter waiting for you. Seems to be from a fancy eye-class lady. Give him the smell of perfumes. Ooh, okay. So, mm, all right, let me see. Or a letter from a lady, show me. Or give her that I'm uh, a young, enthusiastic so-and-so. Yes, show me, please. Um, so this is the letter. So it says, Kind sir, the word in your veil travels as fast as it travels far and wide, and so it has come to my attention that you have opened a new inn at Crossroads. As I am always in favour of exploring the unknown, I would love to meet such a young entrepreneur, and <laughs> never know, I hate that word, entrepreneur, entrepreneur, uh, that one, that word there, as yourself. That being said, I do hope you have a chamber fit for accommodating a countess. Regards, King Owen's court, Lady Countess Elisa Devon, Elisa Devon, Elisa Devon, a uh, Countess Devon. <laughs> Let's go for that. Some Countess, as she said about the place and wants to stay here, some court lady wants to pay us a visit. They're both a little bit dismissive. I would say the Countess. I'd use her official title rather than a court lady. So some Countess says that. A Countess, you say? That's great news. I told you a new inn is what we need. Which Countess are we talking about exactly? A court lady, it says. Or King Owen's court lady. Yeah, that one. Countess Elisa Devon. That's what the letter says. Hmm, I have heard about her. A powerful woman with connections in the court. Also, supposedly, a lady of incredible beauty. But what would a noble like her want with us? It all seems a bit suspicious. Oh, Martin, you sceptic. Um, do you think we're in danger? Or 
We can then go for this. So I think you might be overreacting. A visit from a beautiful countess will surely put her in on the map for all of your veil to see. Luck is finally on our side and you're being more gloomy than ever. So that's intimidation. With an attitude like that, this will never succeed. A bit grumpy. And uh, wisdom. Uh, what exactly could she be wanting with us? If anything, denying her request would put us more at risk of making an enemy out of her. Okay. I don't think I'm going to put... Do you think we're in danger? Surely we're not in danger. She's just visiting. It's fine. So what have we got more chance of doing? Passion or wisdom? Do you know what? They're both the same. I don't like the intimidation idea. I think that might be quite good. Although, to be fair, I'm supposed to be really enthusiastic. If I'm if I'm role-playing this as a little enthusiastic young so-and-so, then yes, that one would work. A visit from a beautiful countess will surely put her in on the map for all of your veil to see. And it worked. Hooray. So, um, and we raised our skill a bit, which is lovely. I guess you might be right, my boy. Maybe the countess does like spending some time away from the court and the noise of the capital. Hell, I could, uh, I myself could bear it, could hardly bear it, when living in Ore. Yes, this might be our big chance. But that means we have to build a private room and invite the lady as soon as possible. Well, Martin, we already have a private room due to my <laughs> bumbling around last time. So there we go, we've got this kind of sorted. Oh, do you think we're any danger? It's not impossible, my boy. Our conflict with Rockbury affected other powerful people as well. Then again... A visit from a person of such a high status could be beneficial for us. I think the best course of action for us right now would be to welcome the Countess's visit and try to figure out her motives. But to do so, we need to have a private room for her. Okay, I think we've got it sorted. Right, hang on, let's just go to this. <laughs> build a chamber. Build a private room. Okay, so equip, build equip a private room fit for the Countess. Um, right, hang on. Let's just pause time for a second. So we do have the private room. Is it fit for a Countess? I'm not entirely sure. I mean, it's clean. It's lovely and clean. It's got the fancy writing desk in and a mirror and a little sort of night potty thing. I mean, yeah, it looks okay to me. It looks okay. This room looks horrendous. <laughs> I don't know why they don't ever clean this room. This room just seems to be... I don't know. They just don't clean it. Um, and we do have a designated cleaner. There is somebody who just does cleaning. And as you can see down here, it's not so bad. There's occasional bits of grot and stuff, but yeah, it's not really awful. But uh, but the bedroom, the, this bedroom, is just awful. It's just terrible. It's just covered in stuff. Yeah, I put a few little um, extra things around the place just because I thought it looked quite nice. It looks quite nice. It make, just makes the room look a little bit different. Look, it's got pretty things on the walls. And of course, that adds uh, these things as well. I think, did that make the townsfolk want to come in? Did that raise our reputation with townsfolk? I can't remember exactly now, but yeah, I thought we'd put them in. I have noticed just then that that room does not have a window, does it? There is no window in that bedroom. I mean, okay, right, so <laughs> we're in a ye olde medieval world and um, there's an enclosed space with nine beds in it. I mean, it, that's going to get a bit whiffy, isn't it? <laughs> there's going to be there's going to be a surprise aroma when you open the door of nine medieval, smelly, sweaty, probably unwashed people. <laughs> just oh, you know what? I'm going to have to put a window in. I know we haven't got loads of money. I've just I can't not have a window in there. And uh, we've got these lovely ones, so we'll just pop a window in. Yay! <laughs> there we go. If somebody can open the window. That would be great, and just let the smells out. Um, okay, so now we can do this. So yeah, we have built a chamber for the Countess. We've got a private room. Uh, our fame is going to go up by one. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So I guess the story is just going to carry on then. We're going to have the chat with Martin or the Countess, I suppose. She could she could rock up at any moment, I assume. Um, it doesn't look like it right now. And we do have quite a lot of these things up here. Uh, because we've been playing for so long, <laughs> so many days, we've got ourselves 30 economic gossip scrolls. And I have used a few of those as well. We did have 40-odd, but I used a few to um, bring down some of our larger trade deals when I bought loads of uh, loads of lager or whatever. 47 of the political gossip ones and 46 traveller's gossip. So we've got loads of those, which is great. Okay, so Martin is back. It ain't much, but it ain't awful either. Martin, it's nice. It's got a writing table in. It's lovely. I think there's a chance a countess might like it. It's time to reply to a letter and see what she wants with us. Okay, so let's reply to the letter. Kind lady, we must admit your excellency's letter, though surprising, brought us a great deal of pleasure. That's supposed to say us. Brought us a great deal of pleasure. Never had we hoped that someone of such status would notice our humble inn. 
That being said, we have prepared a private room only for your excellency and eagerly await your excellency's arrival. The Crossroads Inn Innkeepers. Even though it's not called the Crossroads Inn, it's called the Tank Inn Teapot. But you know what we mean. Okay, send the letter. I pass the letter on to one of the couriers. In the meantime, let's try and gather as much information about the Countess as we can. Okay, in conversation. How do we gather information about the Countess? Not entirely sure how we do that. One thing I want to look at now is something that confused me a little bit in the previous video, but thank you to everybody that has commented and kind of informed me what I'm looking at here. So you can go to the world map and that's fine. And there's these three buttons at the bottom. This one here shows you where resources are available. So I guess if we say, let's say we click on bread. So bread is available in those areas there. So if we try and go over here and buy ourselves some bread from that little place there, it's probably going to be cheaper than if we try and buy some bread from over here because it's not made over there. So they've got to obviously ship that bread in. So that shows you where resources are made and kind of their availability. So, you know, that's whatever that is. That is lager. So lager is pretty cheap in the middle there, which is quite convenient for us. But if we wanted to get lager from over here, it's going to be more expensive. And then there was this thing here. So this is recipes. So you can go and get different recipes. So we could go over to here and try and buy ourselves a recipe. Now, I don't know how that works. I am willing to find out. I'd like to have a little go. I mean, that that's cheese on toast. Not really sure what that is. That looks like some sort of rhubarb sticks. And yeah, we're not really sure what this is. Um, it's been suggested that maybe this is some sort of carrying thing. But if it's to do with food, I don't know. And that, I don't know what that is either. Looks a bit like sushi. And this here... These things show items that we can buy and put into the inn. So we've only got a short distance for those. We can't go much further than this little area here. But I mean, yeah, so if we wanted to get ourselves, say, that rug, we could go down here. And that's what I'm intrigued with. I'd like to go and have a little purchase of these things. I mean, where are we? We're there. Can we go over here and get this shield? Or just there? Peeping Tom. Ah, right, so it's one of these, look. Right, here we go. So we can go to this, because that icon is the same as that. And we can buy this, can we? So we can buy a pelt. So, ah, we have to send somebody to go and get it, do we? Ah, so we send somebody over to pick up a pelt, and then we can put that on the wall. Well, let's try that, shall we? Let's get Eduardo, <laughs> the, the sort of Tinder profile fibbing man. Let's go and, um, let's get him to go and do that. Now, I don't know if we have to do anything specific do we pay money or whatever i don't know and then also i'm intrigued with this i'm intrigued with this cheese on toast thing a soldier snack send your cook to learn a recipe ah we do not have a cook so let's put that right shall we because i want to go and get some more recipes in so let's go to here add a new person clear out all of this stuff right that's kitchen isn't it so a cook and uh, we have one we have a kitchen hand um, yeah, so you're the lowest level of cook available and you are gloomy. Okay, that's fine. So we can, we can cope with that. <laughs> the, the worker is loaded with negativity all the time. Whatever happens, they always perceive it as a calamity. That's why for this worker, the negative effects last longer. Okay, right. So you're just kind of just a bit down and, um, but you're a workaholic, which is great. And what you can do is you can unlock a trait. We could spend five of our political gossip for some reason, political gossip to figure out a person's kind of uh, you know, mentality. I don't really know, but we could spend five and get another trait unlocked. And I think we'll do that because we've not done it before. So why the heck not? So we'll do that. So you are sly. <laughs> so there's something about them that makes us happy. He's on our side and not against us. But he's the only kitchen hand we've got available. So do you know what? yeah, we'll hire you. Welcome aboard Gwynfor. Um, so we'll do this anyway. So we'll go through this. I'm going to keep it on that. Because if you're making food, I'd rather it, Joe, do it a little bit quicker. Um, right, artisan. What does that even mean? Crafting food and products. We're going to do that a bit less. I don't want you to do any innkeeping. None of that at all. I don't want you to do drink preparation and renting beds and all that kind of stuff. Um, cooking, yes, please. Kitchen work, yes, please. Go and do that an awful lot. However, your first job is to go up here, or send Gwyn for, to go and learn how to make a soldier snack. Because if we can have that on the menu, that's going to be very good. Bread and eggs. Hang on, can we have something that we've already... Ah, do you know what? Let's go find out what that is. Kvass. A bread and water drink? Uh, is that what that is? <laughs> it sounds unpleasant, but okay. Um, so we could make that. We could get that. Right, is that also kvass? 
Uh, oh, no, oh no, that's the wrong button. Hang on. Um, that's a roasted grain drink. Okay, so they're different drinks. Right, okay, so gotcha. What's that thing there then? That is pate with cranberries. Okay, that requires a lot of stuff that we don't have. What is that there? Um, oh, hang on, we can't go and do that. Ah, we need to increase our influence here. Oh, there we go. Look, you live and learn. So if we spend some of our political scrolls to increase our influence over in Dutral, we can get the menu thing first. Then we can do some sort of uh, town criering, which we're also going to do momentarily. Then we can have a trade route. Ah, okay, right. It's beginning to make a bit more sense. And the same for Pluven, Plauven. So we can't actually, um, we can't go and trade or anything with them now. But if we spend a little bit more, we could do. Ooh, okay. We could, I mean, I think mushrooms. We could do this. Let's increase our influence there. Oh my goodness me, that goes up a heck of a lot. Wow, okay. So now we can go and see what that food thing is. Hash browns. Okay, right. So potatoes, uh, a bit of fat, and whatever that is, some sort of cream possibly. Yeah, do you know what? Let, oh, hang on. Can we find out what that is? No. Okay, never mind. Uh, let's go to here. Let's get this one because it's it's pretty close by. Let's go to here. Gwyn4, go and learn how to make soldier snacks, which does look like cheese on toast, if I'm completely honest. But cheese on toast is good. I like cheese on toast. So there we go. And you can see here, actually, um, we need fat to light the lantern things. I don't know if we have any, but I'm not too bothered right now. Um, okay, so that's all that done. I'm, I'm intrigued with this now. I didn't know that's how you increase the um, the sort of opinion of these places. Do you know what? Let's, we've got quite a lot of those scrolls. <laughs> Why don't we just sort of do that on each of those cities? So we'll go like that. Yay. And that means we can town crier them for the moment. And that might be worth doing. So, uh, yeah, we didn't do this last time, but you can pick a town crier and they obviously go and yell about our little place and then people will come to us. So let's do this. So, right, we can't do gambling, so we can't pick you. Um, you're going to bring in lots of lots of the distress, the riffraff. Can we have you bring someone else better in? You're going to bring in baddies. So there's all these different town criers. Um, ah, you're quite good, but you need whatever that is. I don't know what that is. Singing and dancing? I don't know if that's a thing that we've got. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. Um, you could come in, because people can smoke in that place. And that would just bring in some people, which might give us a bit of money. So for three days, the effect is 11 new guests are going to show up. Thanks to him. 260. Uh, do you know what? Yeah, okay. We'll go for that. And then we'll go to here and see who we've got over here as well. Now, are they the same people? Um, that's going to bring in 16 people. That could be very, very handy. Hang on. Where was that? Where was the 16? Oh, that brings in 18 people of all different types. 18 people for 500. Oh, let's go for that. Let's go for Ammons and the Crier. There we go. So we spent a little bit of money, but hopefully we will recoup that back when loads of people come in. Okay, marvellous. Uh, right, let's see if the campaign mode thing um, helps us understand any more about the mysterious Countess. Oh, it's also worth pointing out that the decor that we put in our bedroom here means that it has a better appearance. So if we go to here and look in this room, the guest room has a better appearance and that means that we can charge a higher price for it. So it is worth chucking these things in. Oh, here we go. The local chef is not interested in sharing his knowledge with anyone, but your employee is not one to give up. He spends countless hours trying to get the chef's attention, persuading him or just giving him no chance at all for a quiet moment. Eventually, the talented cook agrees to teach him how to prepare the meal for a price of course 200 guldens yeah absolutely we will pay to learn that recipe thank you the cook finally agrees and your employee begins a journey back to the inn okay marvelous so we lost 200 guldens there that's absolutely fine we've got a little bit of money coming in and we've got a bit of fame coming in as well so it's fine we can afford that and that means we have a new recipe now is it on the list now um oh hang on a minute we're, oh, we're out of cider Oh, we should possibly go and order some more of that. That's probably quite an important thing. Uh, right, let's go out here. Do we need anything else? Because they're little people. <laughs> See the little people walking around. Can they move? Oh, no, they don't walk. They just sort of just sort of move around. Okay, that's fine. Um, okay. Also, have we gone to pick up that thing? Did we go and pick up whatever it was? The, the rug thing from up there? Oh, we got that to add in as well. Hang on, hang on. Well, I'm getting very distracted. <laughs> Who would have thought it? Um, go to here. Did we get another rug thing? Is that decor? That's decorative. A pelt. Wasn't there a pelt that we could put on the water? There's two pelts. There's pelt one 
and Pelt 2. And Pelt 2 brings in these guys, brings in the travelling folk. Do you know what? Yeah, let's let's put a couple of pelts on the walls up here, shall we? Um can we can we can we not put the pelts on the walls? Are we not allowed to put the pelts on the walls? Oh, I thought kind of that was the point of these sort of things. Uh no. Maybe it can't go in bedrooms. Maybe that's what it can't do. Can we put the pelt on the wall just here? No. Okay, hang right, hang on. I'm checking. I'm on the right floor. I'm on the correct floor. Uh we don't need to swivel it round. Yeah, it's not gonna be anything like that, is it? No anything silly. Put it on this wall, flip it round. No. Hang on, what about the other pelt? Can we put that on a wall? Yes. Why can't we have that? Maybe we're not allowed. Maybe because he's not back in... Is he back in the building yet? Hang on. Hang on. Come back home. There we go. Walkie, walkie. And in you go. Eventually, at some point. There we go. Right. Now can we put that pelt in? If I press the right button. Um, choose that. Can I put it in now? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm glad we went and got that then. Maybe there is something else I need to do first with that. Okay, possibly, yeah, there's a thing that I need to actually sort of uh, unlock or whatever. I don't really know. Maybe there's a thing that we need to unlock. Actually, which does lead us on to another thing, and that is all of the little upgrades that we can do. Because the game has been running for a heck of a long time, these upgrades have just been slowly totaling up. Now, I don't know what you do to get an upgrade. I don't know what kind of action happens to give you another upgrade. But we've got loads of them. <laughs> we've got 13 of them available. So we need to have a look at what we actually want to go and invest in. Now, yeah, there's a few good ones. This unlocks more land so we can build a bigger place. It might make sense to get that. I do like this. So extra chance of 25% uh, chance of getting additional gossip when learning one so we could go for that and this unlocks a bard which i means we can yeah, i guess we means we can have someone singing and stuff but then you know that reduces the cost of advertising uh, that's an extra level of the inn i'm not so bothered there but yeah this look i like this unlocks larders for storing meat needs ice so we could work on that and that unlocks a dugout which is used for storing ice so we could get ourselves a little larder type thing uh, even the meat doesn't seem to go off, but whatever. So we could get that. Or we could come up here and get this. Here we get workers get tired more slowly. That could be quite good. Employees move 50% faster when they're moving on the map. And that's what we want because we're going to be sending them around. That looks like a money thing. Take a fee from people. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't. I feel bad doing that. Um, rooms are cheaper to build. Supply carts move quicker. There's so many exciting things. And we've got 13. Now, I do want to keep some behind because the campaign mode will let us unlock some of this stuff. So, um, yeah, we haven't got this done yet. We've not got this unlocked. We've not got this unlocked. That'll probably come from playing the game. But I think... Let's go for this. So employees have a chance of overhearing rumours. Yes, please. Then we'll go for workers getting tired more slowly. Then we'll go for them moving a lot quicker. That's good. Um, right, we're not going to do sausages and stuff. Cauldrons, we're not going to do... A fireplace might be quite nice. I like the idea of having a nice fireplace... Um, cost of building rooms is low. We might come and get that at another point. Um, how about uh, we can obtain meat from rats? Mm, delicious. Let's get unlocked more land because then we can get 25% chance of additional gossip, which is good. And that means we can then get reduced cost of advertising. And then we'll keep six behind just in case when Countess what's her name thingy Bob arrives. And that might unlock the Nobles track, which means we can then go down here and start getting gambling tables and all these other kinds of exciting things. Better quality workers will start appearing and all that kind of stuff. And this here, this has got to be key, increases the amount of money people are willing to pay for food and drinks. Yes, please. I want that now. Oh, there's somebody here that looks important. Okay, now are you Countess Thingamajigger? I mean, you're dressed very, very well. There appears to be a bit of your clothing missing in the middle there. I mean, yeah, if you're that rich, maybe you could afford to fill in the gaps there. But okay, that's fine. Let's click on you then. I assume you... Yes, here we go. We've got the next bit of the campaign underway. Okay, so there you go. Yes, so she does look indeed like a sort of a noble woman. She's wearing quite fine sort of uh, fine garb going on. Very sort of elaborate wraps around her arms. Little sort of... Uh, sort of, uh, I don't know what they are, like golden kind of little things hanging off there. Fancy sort of twirly bracelet thing. She's got tattoos as well. Tattoos on her arm, which does seem to match the the sort of the embroidering down here as well. Okay, 
Right, so we've got a fancy person. Okay, so right now, how are we going to pronounce it? I'm going to say it's Elisa. Elisa sounds about right because it might be Elisa, but Elisa sounds okay. I mean, maybe we'll just go for that. Greetings, innkeeper. I'm Countess Elisa Devon. I see the creator keeps you in good health, which sadly cannot be said about your inn. I must admit I was expecting more, but at least the surroundings are rather lovely. I assume my room has been prepared. I'm delighted that you've called the surroundings lovely. You you can come back any time you like. So wait, your room has been prepared, Countess. No check for that. Welcome, Countess. The people far and wide tell tales of your beauty. Yet yeah, nothing compared to the goddess that I see before me. Oh my goodness. Or I'm already tired of your games, Countess. Tell me why you're here. Okay, I'm not going to go for that because that's just rude. Do we go for just functional to business? Yep, your room's ready. Or do we go for a little bit of <laughs> a little bit of excessive kind of compliments? Let's go for that one, shall we? We're supposed to be all sort of eager. So let's go for that. Um, ah, and she liked it. Okay, so we've raised oratory, which is good. What a lovely compliment. Bravo and thank you, innkeeper. I think there's no denying that simple words could hardly start describing my beauty. I do hope you're as good with keeping your guests satisfied as you are with compliments. Such skill is bound to benefit both you and your inn. Okay. Relationship with Alyssa Titans. For some reason, Alyssa is looking at your feet. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully I've polished my boots. Your room has been prepared, Countess. I do hope I find it suitable. For now, I need to rest. We'll speak later, innkeeper. Okay, end the conversation. Right, go up here. Now, that probably explains why nobody ever booked this room. Because we built this room, nobody ever came in. I guess it's because we're in the campaign mode and she hadn't actually, uh, you know, we needed to get her in before we could then rent this room out to other people. So now let's just have a look. She's got the key. She's going into the wrong room. No, 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 Countess, you have failed to understand the fancy. No, <laughs> no, this is not. <laughs> also, she's got her head entirely under the covers. <laughs> she's going to hate this room. There's other people in this room. You had a whole room to yourself. <laughs> this is not the guest room. You're in the wrong room. OK, fine. Well, there you go. <laughs> she's going to hate that. She's going to hate it. She's, I mean, she's sleeping in a weird way anyway. The fact that she's gone entirely under the covers. She's hiding. Okay, fine. Right, so that's not quite worked as I would have expected. But okie dokie. Oh, um, yeah, just to make sure we had enough clean um, uh, pots and pans and stuff. I did build another dishwashing thing outside. So there's one in the kitchen. Uh, but there is also another one outside, just in case, just in case they need that. Um, a few people have suggested maybe put firewood storage in the kitchen. Maybe that's something we could do at a um, at a later point when we expand the kitchen out a little bit. I think it's okay there for now. It's not too long to get the stuff down to here. But yeah, I guess in the in you know in the long run when we actually do start expanding out, we will put that there. Okay, right. Well, let's move time on and let's just see what the. Uh, <laughs> What the countess thinks of her of her room which i i get yeah, what well, i don't hold out much hope oh and she has sat down so she's finished she's finished her uh slumbers and now she's come down here i mean she is skulking a little bit look at that look at the look at the posture she's got she looks a little bit okay she's not sat on the bench properly either but yeah, that's fine um but yeah you're you're you you look a little bit you look a little bit non plus with the surroundings. I mean, the, the table's very clean. It's a lovely, clean table. Hopefully, we will serve her very, very, very quickly. Because I imagine her opinion of this place matters quite a lot. So here we go. Right, move time on. Can we make serving her an absolute priority, please? Oh, no, you're just going to walk through her <laughs> to go to another table. Come on. We need to serve her really, really, really soon. I notice money is coming in quite nicely. And we are getting quite a lot of people in. Is this the town crier doing their job? That could be very good. Okay, so are we serving her? Are we actually serving her? Uh, Zoe? Hang on, what? Aren't you the... Oh, no, hang on. Have I clicked... Did I click the wrong person? Uh, there you go, Elisa. Okay, the room looks dull. The room looks dull. Okay, oh, no. Where's she gone? Did she get bored of waiting? She's gone back to her room. <laughs> well, not her room. Gone back to a room. She's gone back to bed. <laughs> okay, fine. Oh, dear. Uh, right, so she's going to go back to bed. Someone's already, someone's in her bed. She's just going to stand and look pensive for a bit. Just going to, you know, put a hand on her chin and think about life. Right, back downstairs you go, madam. Hopefully this time, somebody will be able to serve you. Um, but you don't seem to have come downstairs. Okay, where are you? Okay, she's just sort of vanished. 
<laughs> I know she's just. I know she's having a little gossip. She's having a little natter with one of the staff. Oh, this is good. Who are you, Yasmin? No pressure, but you need to really make a good impression on on her because uh, yeah, you're very important. Um, right. Okay. I don't really know what's going on now with her. I'm sure that'll all kind of resolve itself soon at some point. I mean, what have we got to do? Just take care of the Countess. Show the Countess to her room. Rent the room you've prepared for the Countess. Yeah. I'm wondering if this, this could be a potential issue. Because there, is there is a room. There is a room here for her. It is this room here. It is a private room. But um, yeah, it's, it's she can't see it. She's not going into the private room. What if we change it to change it to a main hall, come back out, okay, which does automatically clean it, which is very odd, and then change that back into a private room and come out of that. Okay. Um, does that make any difference? Does that work? Is she going to come into this room now? Right, she's coming up the stairs and into no <laughs> she's not going into the private room she's just wandering around the big bunk room with everybody else right okay okay right need to try and resolve this i'm assuming this is this is a bug and i've been accused in the comments on previous videos of saying things are bugs when they're not bugs i i think this has got to be a bug please go in no i thought you were going to go in then oh for goodness sake um how do i can i show you rent oh hang on i have to press the Oh, I have to press the button. Oh, rent that room. Oh, I, okay. Okay, so it wasn't a bug, but it doesn't explain how you do that either. Okay, go to this room, please. The nice room. <laughs> okay, right, here we go. I didn't know we had to do that. I just thought the key above her head meant she had access. She had a key to a private room. But no, there we go. Right, so she's gone to bed again. Okay, she's, <laughs> she's in under the covers again. Innkeeper, I see the room is ready. Eventually. Now you figured out how to hire it to me. Yes, okay. Indeed, Your Majesty. How do you like it? It's very, very peasant. Do you mean pleasant or peasant? Because, you know, I mean, it could be a bit peasant. Quite awful, to be honest. But what did I expect? Oh, dear. Relationship with her weakens. She stops talking for a moment. Not sure what to say. Uh, is there something else you want? Maybe there is something specific you're desiring. Or, oh, heavens, <laughs> what else would you want in that woman? I can't say that. That's all sorts of demeaning. Um, maybe there is something specific you're desiring, Countess. Maybe something from my beloved Sambria. A decoration of sorts reminding me of the beauty of the South. Would you mind getting me something like that, dear innkeeper? So a greater influence in Rakodi. Relationship with Elisa Titans. It's impossible to guess what Elisa is thinking right now. Apart from maybe she would like a thing in her room to make it not look terrible. Um, where can I find one? I'm on it. Kind lady, I dare say <laughs> there is already, uh, there already is the most beautiful thing from Sambri in the room. You. Ooh, that's a bit skin crawly. Okay, or um, I do not mean to be impertinent, but the headboard of the bed is adorned with beautiful Sambrian motifs. That's deception. I, I don't want to lie to her. I don't want to lie to her because she'll see through that. How about we go here? Let's go to oratory. We've got some quite good oratory skills. So relationship with her... Uh, well, time, but only 65% chance. Do you know what? Let's wing it. Yay! There we go. Oh, dear innkeeper. In this world, compliments will get you everywhere. Still, I would love an actual decoration in the room. You don't think of me as an object, do you? Um, no, you wouldn't know what Lisa was thinking of you. Where could I find a, such a decoration? I would suggest looking for it in Rakodi, the beautiful red city. Just to the south of here. It's the biggest Sambrian settlement so close to the Yorvale border. Okay. I am on it. Right, hang on. Pause time for a second. So, Ricodi's down there. Um, ooh. What's that? What's that? Oh, a doctor. Oh, is somebody ill? Oh, Thekla's ill. Oh, yeah. Go, go, go and get well. Yeah, absolutely. Right, so, yeah, we're going to go and pick up... Uh, oh, it's a rug. Okay. Let's go and pick up that rug then. So, a carpet. Um, Eduardo, you went before. Go and do it again. And you should move a bit quicker. Eduardo should move a little bit quicker because um, we unlocked one of those skill things. We unlocked a skill thing in Majika, which, um, where was it? Up here. Uh, I can't remember which one it was. It was that one. So they move 50% faster when they move on the world map. So he should be, he should be legging it down here right now. Although I can't see him on the map, but okay, fine. Well, let's let him get there. Let's give him a little bit of time to uh, move over. In fact, is that him? Uh, oh no, that's her going to the doctor. 
Maybe he's not actually left the map yet. There he is. Okay, so he's going to go over here. He's going to vanish. And then we will see him going on his merry way. There he is. We <laughs> just look quite funny. We can you're picking up the rug? Yes. Right. You've got the rug. This is good. This is all good news. I like that. I love the little sort of item collection thing. That's great. I didn't realize that was a thing, but there we go. Uh, so what have we got? Take care of the countess, place the rug in the room and we will be done. Right. Okay. So come on. Let's move time on nice and fast. Oh, no, the candles have gone out. Ooh. Oh, who are you? Apart from looking a little bit kind of creepy. <laughs> Hello? Do I need to worry about you? Uh, Milan. Okay. Right. Okay, so she's got... Uh, is she from the aviary? Is she an aviary person? I oh, know, she speaks for the couriers. Okay, so she's from a different thing called the couriers. Um, she has a kind of crazy bird mask thing on with little feathery things. I don't know what they are. I guess they would hold messages. I guess they're rolled parchments in there. Okay, a great big kind of delivery thing, kind of, you know, Amazon Prime kind of thing in here. <laughs> okay, fine. Um, it's sort of weird inside. Is that to stop chafing when she's walking? She's a courier. She does a lot of going around. Or is that some sort of horse thing? These, these bits on the inside of your legs? I'm not entirely sure. Okay, but yeah, there you go. So she, she represents the couriers. Okay, now I need to give her a voice. What voice can she have? I'm kind of thinking, maybe she's like a cockney, isn't it? All right, let's go for that. Hello, innkeeper. My name is Milan, and I speak for the couriers. We've learned that none other than the blasted viper Elisa Devon is staying here in your inn. Is that true? Tell me what she is to you, for I fear you might not know who you're dealing with. Okay, so she's not happy that the Countess is staying here. Um, I mean, maybe she's delivering the middle bit of her clothing to her. <laughs> That's what's in the parcel. Um, couriers. Yeah, I'll ask who they are because I've not heard of them before. Although, obviously, they're like delivery people, but maybe there's more to it than that. So, couriers. Aye, the couriers. The griffin riding folk from the northern mountains of Yorvale, carrying messages all across Delcris. Wow, griffin riding folk. Cool. Surely you've heard of us. If not, well, now you have, haven't you? Now, tell me, what's your relationship with Countess Devon? Okay, so I can say... Uh, she's my guest, same as you. I don't trust her, but they do say you should keep your friends close and enemies closer, or my inn is open to all, it's none of your business. Now, that little sort of thumbs up, I imagine means that we increase our sort of uh, reputation with the couriers, but it's probably not going to help very much with the countess. But I do think it's a little bit suspicious that she's just suddenly turned up. But, um, but I'm just going to go for this. I'm going to go for the neutral. Yeah, she's a guest. She's the same as you. And it's fine. I'm not going to kind of go one way or the other. So, uh, yeah, my the Countess is my guest. Same as you. We've been dealing with that Viper Devon for some time now. And let me tell you this. Do not underestimate her. Okay. Dealing with her? Let's go for that. The political status of the couriers has never been stable. The late King Owen treated us well and respected our autonomy. But ever since his death, many nobles have been gaining more and more influence. And some of them are quite openly proclaimed they will take our griffins and freedom away from us. Oh dear. So they might lose their griffins, which is what they use to do everything, because they would fly around. And that kind of explains why they've got the crazy bird mass and those things there, because they're riding griffins. Okay. So, yeah, let's carry on asking her. Let's carry on asking questions. What has all that got to do with the Countess? Because that doesn't seem to be anything to do with her right now. As a political figure and supporter of powerful nobles, she too wishes for the couriers to give up their griffins. But we are and always will be free folk in innkeeper. So you can imagine how we'd feel about about you working with that viper. Yeah, okay, so you're not very happy because she is a powerful noble and she wants them to give up the griffins as well. Okay, fine. Why why? Why do they want your why don't they want you to be free? Do they not like you because you spread rumours or whatever? I don't know. So, okay, I've had a long day. Uh, please give me some time to think about this. She seems like a powerful and dangerous woman indeed, or you should not concern yourself with whom I welcome underneath my roof. I mean, I, yes, she is a powerful and dangerous woman. I completely agree. That is something that does make sense. So let's go for that. So, uh, yeah, she seems like a powerful and dangerous woman indeed. I do not yet know what's your goal in all this, innkeeper, but tread lightly, for you have entered a dangerous world. And if you ever decide to fight that blasted viper, we can help each other. Okay, end of the conversation. Right, so you've not even got into the yin yet and we've done the talky bit. Um, take care of the countess. Right, place the rug. Uh, do we have the rug? Yes. 
Okay, marvellous. So let's go and do that. Let's pause it. Let's go to there. Right, Where is the rug? Where's the fancy rug? There it is. Right, so let's put that into the room. Where can we put it? Um, let's put it so it leads to the bed. That's quite nice. We'll pop it just there. So the rug is in the room, Countess thingamabobs. Yay. Okay. So we've sort of done all of that stuff. I imagine there's going to be a talky bit. There we go. There we go. Oh, the colour, the quality of the material. Beautiful. Surely a handiwork of a Sambian master, probably from Ragosa. You can tell by the gold so subtly embedded into it. Really? Wow, only cost a hundred. Crikey. Oh, you've made me happy, Inkeeper. Thank you. Now the room is perfect. Well, I think you're being very generous there, but okay. Um, do you need anything else? Can I leave? Are all the ladies in Sambria so... dot dot dot? Or I've heard so much about Sambria. Uh, the beaches, the culture and the women. So... dot dot dot. Stop so dot dot dotting. What does that mean? Finish your sentence. Um, do you need anything else? Would you like anything else? I got hungry from all this talk. Could you tell the cook to prepare me something to eat? Something local, a Yorville delicacy perhaps? Or maybe something from Untermarch? We're so very close to the border after all. Where can I find a recipe for something like that? I've already got a recipe, my lady. Well, it depends. What would you like to prepare for me, dear innkeeper? We're close to the border, but still Yorville, something local. Yeah, I, 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 we don't need to go to Untermarch. We've got a Yorville thing. Let's do that. Splendid. Send your cook to the west to do trial. I've heard it's finally getting back to its position on the economical map of Yorville after its destruction during the Great Fire. Surely your cook will find an intriguing recipe there. Greater influence in Dutral. Okay. So now she wants us to go over to here and grab the food thing. And that's bumped our influence up. Oh my goodness me. Wow. Can we trade with them as well? Hang on. Can we do that? How do we do that? Ah. Oh, that's interesting. So to create a new trade route... We want to go down here and they've got apples and berries and all that kind of stuff. Um, it would cost 20 of those scrolls or 500 guldens. Do you know what? Let's go for that. Yeah, let's pick that. So we've opened up a trade route and that means we can go over. Oh my word, it's opened up all these things. And it's, <laughs> we're back near the bank again. The Sassy Sisters. <gasps> oh, this is very cool. The, the Happy Farm. Oh, can we buy our last from the Happy Farm? That sounds brilliant. No, I, oh, there's so many brilliant notes. Mr. Piggy, <laughs> please tell me that you just sell sausages, Mr. Piggy. Oh, that's a little bit disappointing. You sell all these other things as well. I was hoping you just sell sausages. But okay, so now she wants to go over to here so we can go and pick up moss dumplings. Mmm. <laughs> Gwynfor, go and pick up some moss dumplings because they sound delicious. Okay, familiar message. The local chef doesn't want to share the knowledge. We can get moss dumplings for 200 guldens. We've got 4,801. Let's pay to learn it. So now the uh, person will be on their way back. They come back very quickly. <laughs> it's brilliant how fast they come back. So now we need to add that onto the menu. So moss dumplings. Ugh, sounds revolting. So right, now we need greens, potatoes, flour and garlic. Okay, so, and it also requires ah, a stove, which is what we put in last time, which is marvellous. So we'll add that onto the list. And now that's a very, very good thing now. So uh, I hadn't noticed this before. I wonder if there's some way to filter things out as well. So if we go to say Sassy Sisters, we can say, okay, what's on the menu? And we know that we need all these things. So we need flour and greens. So they don't sell all the ingredients that we need for the moss dumplings. So I wonder if Dutral does. So yeah, it was greens. It was garlic as well, wasn't it? Hang on. What was on the thing? What was the ingredients for this? Where is it? Uh, moss dumplings. So greens, potatoes, flour and garlic. Greens, potatoes, flour and garlic. Does anywhere have all of these things? Greens, garlic, flour, and they don't have the potatoes. So we're going to possibly have to make two trips, which is a bit of a faff, isn't it? Um, it would be nice if there was some summary screen, which there might well be. If there is, please let me know in the comments. Of Because yeah, yeah, obviously I can go here and go, right, okay, I want to get some flour and some garlic and some greens. And then I can kind of go, well, that's that much. And then I go, well, how much is it from Crossroads? Okay, let's get some garlic and some whatever. And you know, I can't see all the prices in one screen, which would be really nice. The Gwyn camp? 
Oh, that's opened up a thing up there. Oh, okay, we can go past the old market. So, uh, right, let's just go and see where we can get the best price for the, all these different bits and bobs that we need to make these awful sounding dumplings. Okay, it seems potatoes are quite hard to come by. Now, there are some on the map up here. Um, and it looks like, yeah, so there's some potatoes up in that area. There's potatoes over to the west of your vale and over on this island here. But there's not really any near us. The sort of central areas are a little bit bereft of potatoes. So we might need to go over to Pluven and um, do some of this. So we might set up a trade route with those guys. And do you know what? We'll just increase the influence. Can I not do that with them? Oh, I can't increase the influence with them. Oh, I thought that might be quite nice if I could, given I've got five. But okay, fine. I can't do that right now. Um, so yeah, let's go to here. Let's set up a trade route. Um, I will pay. I'll pay the money. Absolutely. Now, hopefully they do have potatoes. Yay! Right, okay. So they do have some potatoes, which is marvellous. We've had to get our stuff from a couple of different places because prices were quite wildly different. So we've got, I think, what is the best price. And this is the only place we can go for potatoes. So let's just grab five lots of them for now. Um, because, yeah, 300... Oh, they're quite cheap. Do you know what? Let's get, let's get 10 lots. I'm sure we've got storage for a load of potatoes somewhere. Oh dear, we have a complaint. One of the guests is not happy. So, innkeeper, where's my food? How much longer do you expect me to wait? Potatoes are really hard to come by in this place. Um, unfortunately, some of the ingredients are really hard to come by indeed. Um, oh, apologies, kind countess. But worry not, you're in good hands. Your meal will be ready in no time. Cook is finishing the meal. That's a lie. Or oh, <laughs> silence, we're working here. Let's try and go for this. Let's go for oratory. We've got a 70% chance of success. And we have succeeded. Oh, I see. Still, should any problem arise, I expect you to grow the ingredients yourself if need be. Okay. I mean, that... And that's going to take quite a long time. That's going to take a long time. Should any problem arise, I want you to grow the potatoes. I mean, hope you're not hungry. <laughs> you're going to be here a while if you're going to wait for the potatoes to grow. Um, excuse me. You heard me. If you can't get the proper ingredients, you better go and grow them yourself. I did not come all the way here to tr not try some local food. And I sure I'm not leaving without it. Ah, so the garden patch is unlocked and we can indeed start growing potatoes ourselves. Now, we don't need to do that right now because hopefully the stuff's going to arrive, but now we can start growing stuff in the garden. We can have a little gardening area. Oh, crikey, who are you? There's some bloke. Hello. Oh, my goodness me. You're called Alstero. Okay, right. So you're you're clearly an adventurer of some sort. Okay, right. So you're from the Knight's Errand. My goodness, there's so many new people. Right, you're clearly a warrior of some sort. Uh, for some reason, he's wearing a net. I don't know why you're wearing a net, but there you go. So, uh, yeah, you've got a sword, you've got armour on, you've got a spare... I don't know what that is there. Like a, there's a blade or something just there, isn't there? But, okay, right, so you're sort of all fighty, but a bit of bling on as well, and a mighty fine moustache and beard, if I may say so myself, sir. Um, okay, right, we need a voice for you. Hello there, innkeeper. May all the monsters scatter and hide, and all the bandits stay afright, for I... Two fish, Alstero. Okay, two fish. Right, you are. Have arrived. As I am currently on a glorious quest, I may not linger here too long. Alas, my companions told me that a beautiful lass is staying here in your inn, and so see her I had to, as well as offer her the humble services of the Knight's Errant. Okay, fine. Who are you then? Right, so the Knight's Errant. There's a certain Countess staying with us tonight, but sadly, I uh, doubt she'd want to have anything to do with you, sir. You must be talking about the Countess. Or out of here, you tramp, and don't dare bother Countess. Okay, let's find out more about them. Let's ask more about the Knight's Errant. Kind innkeeper, don't tell me you've never heard of our order, wherein all the bravest warriors of Delcris are joined together in their thirst for honour and glory. If there's a poor soul needing help, you may be sure the Knight's Errant are already on their way to save it. And if that poor soul be a beautiful lady, the Knight's Errant will be there even sooner. Okay, right, so you must be talking about Countess Thingamabob. Yes, okay, obviously you know who it is. A Countess, you say? Oh, we didn't know who it was. Okay. A Countess, you say? Even better. Take me to a kind innkeeper so I may introduce myself and offer her my services. Um, okay, all right, I guess. I don't think we should be bothering a lady of her stature as you wish or clear off. Um, I don't know what to do. Um, do you know what? Let's introduce them. Why the heck not? Let's see what happens. What's the worst that could happen? As you wish. Right you are. Oh, it's you, innkeeper. And I see you've brought some thing with you. Pilip, pray explain. Your Excellency, allow me to introduce Two Fish Ostero, the representative of the Order of the Knights Errant. Innkeeper, 
I believe that the idea of a private room is rather mutually exclusive with bringing any old vagabond in here. And while I do appreciate having high-ranking friends, take this man and yourself out of here. Oh dear, she's really disappointed in me. I thought he might be able to defend you or whatever. Okay, right, so that went all sorts of bad. Well, that went just about as well as expected. Not to worry, Darren Keeper. The important thing is that you let Toofish Alstero and the Knights Errant know should the lady ever need a help. And we will arrive swift as a Cossin River and with all the force of a great thunderstorm. Okay, right, you're a lunatic, right, you are. Well, let's just hope that day never comes for a variety of reasons. Okay, and he goes away. And where are we? Oh, we're, we're over this way, are we? Okay, right, he is coming into the inn, is he? Okay, <laughs> fine. Um... How is the Countess? Right, so we're still cooking her her food. And do you know what? I think with that done, and with uh, her sort of, uh, yeah, her view of us now uh, dropped a little bit, because, yeah, she did not like the intrusion there, did she? She wasn't very happy that we'd introduced her to somebody who could be quite helpful. But, um, yeah, possibly should have taken into account that she's quite pompous and stuff. But there we go. So with that done, I think what we'll do is we'll finish up for now. And, um, yeah, next time we'll come back and we'll just see what goes on with that. So what goes on with the Countess and Mr. Two Fish Man. And, um, yeah, we'll just see how we get on as well. Because we're getting, you know, we've got quite a bit of money coming in now. Quite a bit of money. We've got lots of stuff ordered. So all the stuff here is, you know, the, the garlic and the, the stuff to prepare her meal has been delivered or is slowly arriving. So that's pretty good. So hopefully, hopefully, what do we get from this? So we get more fame. That's going to be good because that brings more people in and all that kind of stuff. So it drags more people in, which means we're going to make some more money. Um, oh, do we actually need to cultivate the potatoes? I wasn't going to do that. Okay, fine. <laughs> Maybe we have to do this as well, even though I've ordered potatoes from somewhere else. I found an alternative. Okay, we'll have to see what happens with that as well. So we might actually do some gardening next time. But um, yeah, we'll see what happens next time out. But we shall indeed finish up for now. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. If you are, then please do leave a like. That would be very splendid indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here in Crossroads In, But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard. And I'll see you next time. The pyramids was built far away, the terracotta was built far away, and the Great Wall was built far away. Far away sounds like a very good place to go, doesn't it? Greece, you handsome devil, Alexander. Hello there. King Nipplehead is not at the bottom of the table. I'm above him. Oh, and that was a rather ill-advised move.